A vertical scroll bar is a tool that can help us visualize large data tables from top to bottom. In this scenario, I have a long data table that goes all the way up to row 34. The problem is I can't view the entire table in one go. Rather, I have to scroll down with the mouse wheel every time. This becomes irritating as it interrupts my workflow. So, is there a convenient way to scroll through long data sets? The answer is a yes. With the help of vertical scroll bar, I can see all of my data in this small table. I can click the arrow to scroll through one row at a time, or I can drag the slider to move through multiple rows. It's really a convenient way to visualize long-form data tables. Hi there, welcome to Excel Demi, where you can learn to use Excel and solve Excel VBA-related problems. I'm Ishraq Kader, and in today's video, we'll be discussing how to create a vertical scroll bar in Excel. So, let's get started. In this video, I'll be showing you a step-by-step -step guide on making a vertical scroll bar, just like the one I showed you earlier. For this tutorial, I'll be using Microsoft Excel 365. Before we begin, let's briefly go through what exactly is a scroll bar in Excel. A scroll bar is a slider that we can move to view the data from left to right or top to bottom. There are two types of scroll bars. Vertical scroll bars allow us to view the data from top to bottom and vice versa, while horizontal scroll bars enable us to view the data from left to right or right to left. Let's consider the company profile list dataset, which contains the company owner name, the name of the product, followed by number of employee, and lastly, yearly revenue in millions column. Here, we want to make a vertical scroll bar so we can conveniently look through this long set of data. We can make vertical scroll bars by using Excel's form control objects. In order to do this, we have to enable the developer tab first. So I'll right click on any of the tabs in the ribbon and go to customize the ribbon. This opens up the Excel options dialog box. Here I'll check the developer option and click on OK. Now our developer tab is visible. I'll go to the Developer tab. In the Controls section, I'll click the Insert drop-down. Here you'll find Form Controls. I'll select Scroll Bar. Now you can insert your scroll bar according to your preference. In my case, I'll insert it just below Max Value. That's it, we've successfully drawn out our vertical scroll bar. In the next step, we'll activate our scroll bar. But first, we have to calculate the maximum value. So, I'll go to the G5 cell, press equal, type the rows function. Here, I'll enter B5 colon E34 cell reference, which constitutes the entire data set. I'll close the parenthesis, then I'll insert a minus operator and type 10. Press enter and we get a maximum value of 20. Here, the rows function calculates the total number of rows in our data set, and 10 is the number of rows that will be displayed in the smaller table. Next, I'll right click on the scroll bar and go to Format Control. Under the Control tab, we can see various controls for our vertical scroll bar. The maximum value refers to the highest value that the vertical scroll bar can have. In our case, the maximum value is 20, so I'll select 100 and type 20. The incremental change determines the scroll rate. A value of 1 means the dataset will be scrolled by one row each time we click on the scroll bar. I'll keep the default incremental change of 1. Next, the page change determines how many rows we want to scroll at a time when dragging the vertical scroll bar slider. The default value of 10 is fine. So I'll stick with it. And lastly, the cell link refers to the cell address where we want to keep the value of the scroll bar. I'll click the arrow and select the maximum value of 20 in the G5 cell. Click on OK. That's it. We've assigned the format controls of our scroll bar. Now it's time to connect the vertical scroll bar to our dataset. As you can see, I have already inserted a small table with 10 rows beside the original dataset. I'll go to the i5 cell, press equal, type the index function. 
for the array argument, I'll type B5 colon E34 cell reference, which selects our entire data set. I'll select the reference and press F4 to lock in both the column and row references. Press comma, then I'll type G5 cell reference and press F4 to lock in both the row and column reference. Insert a plus operator, then type the rows function. For the array argument of the rows function, I'll type B5 column reference, then press F4 to lock in the reference. Insert colon, again type B5, then close the parentheses. Insert comma. For the column number argument, I'll type the columns function. For the array argument of the columns function, I'll type B5 cell reference. Press F4 to lock in the row and column references. Insert colon, then type B5. Close the parentheses, close the final parentheses and press enter. Let's briefly understand how this formula works. Here the rows and the columns function calculates the total number of rows and columns in our dataset, while the index function uses the values of the rows and columns functions to look up and return the corresponding value. Next, I'll use the field handle tool to copy the formula across the columns then I'll apply the fill handle tool again to copy the formula into the cells below. Now just click the scroll bar or drag the slider and we can see that our data keeps changing. So far I discussed the steps to make a custom vertical scroll bar. Now Excel has a built-in vertical scroll bar that you will find on the right side of the Excel window. You can use this vertical scroll bar to view the data from top to bottom or vice versa. If you want, you can hide or unhide the built-in vertical scroll bar. So let's find out how we can achieve this. We can control the visibility of the vertical scroll bar from the Excel options. I'll go to the File tab at the top left corner. Then I'll go to Options at the bottom. This opens up the Excel Options window. Here I'll go to the advanced section, I'll scroll down. Here in the display options for this workbook, we can see show vertical scroll bar option. If we uncheck this option, our vertical scroll bar will disappear. I'll click on OK and we can see that our vertical scroll bar is invisible. Alternatively, I'll again go to the file tab, click on options. I'll go to the advanced section, scroll down. Now if I check the show vertical scroll bar option and click on OK, our vertical scroll bar is now visible. We can use a simple macro to hide or unhide the built-in vertical scroll bar. To do this, go to the developer tab, click on Visual Basic at the top left corner. You can also use the Alt plus F11 shortcut keys. This opens up the Visual Basic Editor. I'll click the Insert tab and select Module. This inserts Module 1. Inside the Module 1 window, we'll type in our VBA code. I'll start by typing SUB, which stands for Sub Procedure. Then insert a space, name the sub procedure according to your liking. I'll name it Hide underscore Unhide underscore SCRL, which stands for Scroll underscore Bar. Then I'll open and close parentheses. Press Enter. I'll press Enter a couple of times to make some space. Then I'll write the width statement. Active Window. Press Enter. I'll press the Tab key to indent the line. This makes it easier to read the code. I'll insert a full stop. The Visual Basic Editor is showing me all the available properties of Active Window. I'll type Display Vertical. It's suggesting that I use display vertical scroll bar option. I'll press the tab key to autocomplete. Then I'll press equal. If I select false, then the vertical scroll bar will become invisible. So I'll click on false and press the tab key to autocomplete. Press enter to go to the next line. Then I'll press backspace to delete the indentation. Now I'll end the width statement. Type end width. Press enter. Next, Click the Run button to execute the macro. You can also use the F5 key as shortcut. I'll go to the spreadsheet and we can see that our vertical scroll bar is now invisible. Again, if I go back to Visual Basic, I'll select the false and replace it with true. If I rerun the macro, 
and go back to the spreadsheet, we can see that our vertical scroll bar is again visible. In this demonstration, I have shown you a detailed guide on how to create a vertical scroll bar in Excel. Hopefully, you can apply this knowledge to make vertical scroll bars according to your requirement and convenience. Don't forget to download the practice workbook from the video description. Try it out for yourself. It's a great way to improve your Excel skills. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up. If you have any queries, suggestions or feedback, leave a comment down below. For more information, you can also visit exceldemy.com. Also, to see more helpful content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. Hope to see you next time. Bye!